In our ongoing studies of carbohydrates from Chapter 11, we want now to consider the subject of glycoproteins. Glycoproteins are proteins that carry carbohydrate groups. In other words, they are protein with a glycan unit. Most surface proteins, or those that are excreted outside of the cell, carry some kind of a saccharide group, or moiety. In eukaryotic systems, glycoproteins are either end-linked to the amino acid asparagine, and that's pictured on the lower left here, or O-linked to serine or threonine, and that's pictured on the lower right here. First, let's look at end glycosylation. In this case, a chain of 14 carbohydrate residues is added to the polypeptide as soon as it comes off the ribosome in the rough ER or endoplasmic reticulum. In other words, we're going to construct a polymer of 14 carbohydrates and then attach it to the polypeptide as soon as it comes off the ribosome. And that's illustrated at the top of, this, of our figure here. At the Golgi apparatus, we're going to have glycosidases. These are enzymes that clip off some of those carbohydrate residues. And then we have other enzymes, glycosyl transferases, that add others. And so we get a very uh, intricate and, and variable network of carbohydrates attached to our protein. It gives us a lot of specificity as well. In other words, we might have the same protein but have different carbohydrate units attached and they might serve different functions. In this illustration from your book, we have a table, a legend on the right here that illustrates the fact that the, the different shapes and colors are meant to illustrate that there are different sugar residues that are added and removed. You are not responsible for these details. All you need to remember about end glycosylation is that it involves adding a chain of 14 residues to asparagine as it comes off the ribosome and that it's further processed at the Golgi apparatus. Some enzymes clip off residues, others add more. In O-glycosylation, it tends to be a more extensive network than with N-linked glycoproteins. And for that reason, rather than undergoing processing, we tend to build these up one residue at a time at the Golgi apparatus. Again, it's because it's a more extensive network. So all you need to remember about O-glycosylation is that it's attached either to serine or threonine, that they're built one residue at a time in the Golgi, and that it's a more extensive network. The purpose of glycosylation is that, for one thing, it gives us a tremendous variety. Uh, these residues are very hydrophilic because of all of those OH groups and conformationally very flexible. And remember, these are generally on the outside of the cell. They occupy a large volume above the protein surface and they're highly hydrated. They may be protective or they may to help, help to stabilize a protein. In some cases, carbohydrate residues are added to direct the protein to a molecular chaperone for proper folding, and once it's folded, that carbohydrate group is removed. It can also serve as a kind of intracellular addressing system to send the protein to the right location in the cell. And of course, it's the basis of the ABO blood grouping. And the, here's the fi a figure from your book to illustrate the different types of carbohydrates that are present on blood types A, B, and O, and you don't have to remember the differences here, just the purpose. As we considered in this lesson how we could modify protein polymers by the addition of carbohydrate groups, so in the next video lesson we'll consider how we can modify carbohydrate polymers by the addition of peptides. We also want to see how this change in the composition of these polymers contributes to their structure and function.